Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, myself, I'm Dr. Leeson Thapa. I'm a consultant neurologist working in National Neurocenter Kathmandu. Uh, so uh, today uh, I'll be talking on uh, stroke. Basically, I'll be talking about the precise treatment of stroke and, and the treatment that makes the difference not only in individual's life, but like, a, like the family and, uh, and community and, and, whole, and, and the entire nation. Uh, so uh, talking about the topic stroke, I'm sure that you all know about stroke a lot. So stroke basically is uh, one of the most devastating and one of the most common disease that we see around in neurology. So you might have heard about like a patient getting unconscious and then like um, uh, having weakness of a part of body or one side of a body. So stroke uh, with the increasing number of population recently, stroke has been increasing or the burden of of stroke is increasing that we all are aware of. Uh, basically, I'm from Nepal and uh, talking about the scenario of Nepal and country like India, bordering country like India and um, China. Uh, this stroke uh, recently is increasing a lot. And recently in Nepal also, we have done uh, the, uh, the community-based uh, prevalence study, which shows that prevalence is relatively higher than other Asian countries, uh, other Asian countries. And uh, if we talk about the global context, we all know that stroke is stroke rate is very very high in developing country like India and uh, Nepal. And uh, talking about like uh, about, about the uh, care of stroke in Nepal, more than eighty percent of those people who suffer from stroke actually do not get the best treatment they 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 actually need in the first hour of their stroke or first few hours of the stroke. Uh, we all know that there are lots of reasons to it, but to mention some. Uh, the thing is like geographical complexities, which leads to delayed arrival of patients in hospital. And second thing is like, we know that there are lack of trained uh, like personnel in, in country like Nepal. And also fi finally, uh, la the last but not, not the least is like, you know, there are very few stroke ready hospitals which offer the best stroke treatment for acute stroke. Uh, today, actually, I'll be, I'll be focusing on the commonest stroke, which is the ischemic stroke. There are two types of stroke. One is hemorrhagic, in which the blood like actually breaks inside the brain. And another one is like uh, the ischemic stroke, which actually like, you know, which actually uh, uh, covers almost 80% of the stroke, more than 80%, I would say, uh, stroke in, in, our, in our scenario. So, so I'll be focusing more on in this uh, talk, I'll be focusing more on ischemic stroke and, and its treatment. So what basically is stroke, I just discussed that stroke uh, is uh, a stroke is something which leads to the death of brain cell after, uh, after getting, after, after, after the vessel in the brain gets uh, like blocked because of clot or something else, something else. Because of this, a part of brain or a whole brain, a part of brain uh, actually gets damaged and then the patient has some deficit attributable to that part of the brain. For an example, the, the symptoms could be like, you know, uh, 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 weakness of the arms, so difficulty in speaking, facial deviation or facial weakness, and the leg weakness, especially if it happens in one side of the body. body. So these are, basically, uh, these are basically the common kind of presentation a patient has in acute stroke, which must be identified. So uh, how to identify stroke is a major challenge before we really jump into the treatment. Uh, stroke, to identify stroke, uh, basically World Stroke Organization, they have a mnemonic called be fast, be fast. But in Nepal, during the community based study, we have a little bit like modified it into like O, be fast. That means like O, be fast. The, 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 uh, like the, the alphabet O is actually to the onset of these symptoms that I discussed just now, or which I would be uh, like, which, which would be following. So uh, the first thing is onset. The onset should be acute. If there is acute onset symptom or sudden onset symptom, which actually is like B E F A S, that means like for balance, if there's a balance problem, there's an eye problem or vision problem. And if there is like facial deviation and A for arm, arm weakness, or like speech problem, that means slurred speech, S for speech, uh, that, that actually tells us that it is a high time you need to take the patient to one of the nearest hospital or a red, uh, like stroke ready hospital if possible as soon as possible because we know that like stroke is not only treatable but it's curable if it is like you know if it is treated or if it is tackled on time so uh, 
basically when a patient suffers from so before jumping into or before going into the detail of treatment i would like to tell you that like you know a long term outcome actually like depends on either the patient either the patient has ischemic or hemorrhagic and in ischemic stroke how fast the patient is taken to the hospital and how fast the patient is uh, how how fast the patient is treated appropriately so now uh, now we know that based on this discussion treatment is one of the most important like you know uh, the the facet of management of acute stroke or acute ischemic stroke so how is the patient treated or what should be done immediately like you know uh, to treat the patient uh, treat the patient of ischemic stroke ischemic stroke uh, we know that as we discussed we know that there's a clot in the vessel inside the brain which gives rise to stroke so the main idea is to either dissolve the clot inside the brain or to remove the clot which is inside like the vessel uh, to to achieve the uh, like uh, to achieve this we have two modalities of treatment number one is like thrombolysis treatment which is which is uh, in which drug like ltplase is used or blood we, we call it clot buster clot busters are used within 4.5 hours of the onset of the symptoms that i discussed just now so the idea is the the, the patient or the sufferer should reach to the hospital in, in in as early as possible so that a physician or a doctor has enough time to evaluate and then institute this thrombolytic therapy second treatment is like uh, the meca like, like thrombectomy which is known as mechanical mechanical thrombectomy in which a wire or a catheter is passed and it's passed and it's it's negotiated i mean it is it is it is taken up to the clot and then the clot is removed by by surgical method so that's another way in with which the patient can be treated and this mechanical thrombectomy actually would be beneficial if the process is undertaken within 6 hours of disease onset but but i would tell you that that there are some exceptions in which up to 12 hours uh, in in up to 12 hours time mechanical thrombectomy can still be possible but when i tell up to 12, 12 hours it doesn't mean that take patient late to the hospital you one must take a suffer or a patient of stroke as soon as to the hospital and other medications in acute setting those uh, like uh, which are to be given are blood thinners like antiplatelets which we have heard like aspirin clopidogrel and other like anticoagulants like warfarin or there are newer anticoagulants uh, which actually are given when we find when we find a patient has some cardiac source of stroke in the in these cases so uh, so now what we have understood is like stroke is one of the major problem and it definitely in in patients of the, the patient of stroke we it's not only like it's a treatable condition but it's a curable condition but the idea is patient must be taken to the hospital on time and there are two major kinds of like treatment that are offered and these two treatment actually brings about the best outcome in the patient of stroke that number one is thrombolysis and number two is thrombectomy now the best once a patient suffers from stroke and gets treated or gets cured with this treatment we must also realize that the person has higher chance of having like further stroke or like another stroke so there are there are techniques to prevent this kind of stroke too so how to prevent or what are the best ways to prevent another stroke now in long term in long term there are few medicines which are very very essential for treating stroke in my practice what i have found is like you know the patient patients always come and they ask like how long to take medicine i tell them like you know i tell them very very clearly that you must take it for life long until the unless a doctor asks you not to stop the medicine because that is not important to treat your current condition only but like it also prevents you from having another stroke very uh, like significantly so the so the idea is like there would be many medications like antiplatelets which i said right aspirin clopidogrel and there would be lipid or like you know fat lowering medicine and also diabetes medicine or oral uh, hypoglycemic agents or insulin to treat diabetes so many people need various combinations of this medicines to to prevent another stroke but one one another important thing importantly i would like to emphasize as like one of the cause for other stroke or another stroke is carotid occlusion the vessels in the in the neck that connects the heart and the brain if there is clot in the neck vessel that can give rise to another stroke so how to prevent how to prevent another stroke in when when there is like carotid block 
is there are two modalities of uh, like uh, treatment. One is carotid uh, and arteriectomy and another is carotid stenting. That's also possible. And it's one of the very, very important intervention to prevent another stroke if there is carotid occlusion. Uh, finally, uh, the lots of people like, you know, uh, the people suffering from stroke or different people suffering from stroke need different require, they require a different treatment or different combinations of the treatment just uh, that I recently discussed. So another, apart from this, another important part of actually uh, helping not to have, or like preventing and the stroke would be quitting smoking. Smoking is number one risk factor. In fact, like in our experience in Nepal, at least we have found that uh, although people attribute hypertension as the major cause of stroke, which causes more of stroke in our setting. So quitting, quitting smoke, smoking would help, definitely help. And other thing is like eating, uh, what are complications associated in, in stroke and are they really important? Say yes. In fact, like if I have to uh, recall like uh, good takes or like a good stroke are related to the complications of stroke, not the stroke per se, but the complication of stroke. So these complications must be addressed appropriately. And there are very few complications which can really be treated very effectively, not only in the hospital, but also at home. So out of them, I would like to highlight upon like you know, difficulty in difficulty in eating or like swallowing difficulty, which we call as dysphagia. Dysphagia um, is, uh, is one of the most important complications that can lead right, that can that can give rise to aspiration pneumonia and the patient's death uh, uh, like it is attributable to this condition in, in many, many hospitals. So, so to do this, to do this, like specific exercises and swallowing trainings are provided by, uh, by, the, by the speech uh, therapist or like the physiotherapist, and it can, it can help uh, to prevent aspiration pneumonia and complications related to swallowing difficulty. The next one is like urinary tract infection. Urinary tract infection uh, can occur in patients with stroke who are who are who are actually like who, who require catheter urinary catheter that we commonly call as Foley catheter. We in our clinical practice we try to avoid catheter as much as possible, and at home also one should uh, one should uh, uh, one should try to avoid urinary catheter. And instead of urinary catheter, intermittent like clean catheterization is should be done as much as possible. But let me remind you all that like, if there is established urinary tract infection, one should treat urinary tract infection uh, instantly with antibiotics. The other, other complication uh, in stroke patients is like pressure sores or like we call it like uh, pressure ulcers. Pressure ulcers can be very mild to begin with. They can be just reddening of the skin uh, in which lots of people, they, they, uh, they uh, actually lack to identify or they fail to identify that that reddening of the skin as scale, like pressure sore or skin ulcer, which later on give rise to ulcer, and that ulcer can, can be deep enough up to the bones, up to the bones. And the common site includes the presacral area or the lower back area. So once we actually like, you know, prevent, to prevent this particular complication, the patient should be, the patient should, uh, should, should be turned on, on lateral position every one or two hours and appropriate Consultation with physiotherapist can help how to prevent this pressure source. Pressure source, if not treated, can give rise to infection and sepsis, and that can also give rise to a very serious complication in patients with stroke. And uh, the this, uh, the another complication which is equally important is like you know formation of the blood clot in weakened limbs. That means like if the limb is if the patient doesn't move limbs, they can have clot in in, in the vessels. In the, in the lower limb, which we call as deep brain thrombosis. So to prevent deep brain thrombosis, the weak part or the patient should move as early as possible. And then the patient should put on deep, like DVT stalking, we call it stalking. Also, we as a doctor, physician, we, we prescribe medicine, medicine, blood thinners again to prevent this blood clot. And appropriate consultation should be done with the physician about when to discontinue this uh, uh, this, these medicines which prevent clot formation in lower limbs. Finally, the last, I would say, it's not the last, but one important uh, complication associated with stroke is depression, which we tend to ignore a lot in our clinical practice, but this should not be ignored. Depression is very, very common, I would say, in almost about two thirds of people we find depression, and then it is actually associated with stroke, which are even like a moderate or severe stroke, I would say. So stroke actually like, 
stroke depression associated with stroke is one of the important complication which is treatable again. So for this, like psychiatrist consultation should be done, and if need be, appropriate treatment should be uh, like should be in initiated. And we have seen that patient doing a lot better with antidepressant treatment if the patient has associated depression. Uh, the final uh, uh, question that patients usually ask with us, our patient party, family members ask with us, is like how how uh, uh, like you know how how is this how is this stroke going to be in future or like what are the chances of recovery of stroke in my patient and i have heard or i have we have actually like you know we hear in day to day practice like people saying that like you know the stroke will get recovered do not worry i'm i'm i i uh, I'm, I'm sure that like you know they they try to they try to give a uh, little bit of they try to console the patient party or patient by telling this but we must understand what's the science behind it the basic thing about recovery after stroke is like, you know, it is time, time, time and time. Time and appropriate treatment of stroke can reverse all the neurological deficit. That means I discussed again, 4.5 hours and 12, I mean like six hours time. The, it all depends on what kind of treatment the patient has received during the initial phase of stroke or when the symptoms started as early as possible. And the thing is like, if the patient already has sustained stroke and the initial treatment could not reverse the, the reverse the ischemia or the brain like you know brain clot it, uh, the, the treatment could not reverse the uh, reverse the flow to the to the to the occluded part of the like you know the, the vessels or the vessel area the area in the brain gets damaged if the area in the brain gets permanently damaged then that damaged part is not recoverable. So the idea is uh, the recovery after stroke depends on how much brain tissue has been damaged because of stroke. And the, the recovery that we see in our, in our practice or like in a community is first three to six, first I would say three to six months is the time when the patient recovery is very fast. But after that patient recovery, the recovery phase of the patient in terms of like motor weakness or weakness or like swallowing, it's slower. They are they're, they're relatively slower. They do occur, but they are at significantly slower pace. So now at the end also, what I would like to emphasize upon is stroke is not only treatable, but it's a curable condition. It must be treated on time. So the patient must be taken on time, especially within 4.5 hours, within 4.5 hours to appropriate hospital setting or stroke ready hospitals where they can offer the best treatment and there are there are like you know two kind of treatments one is thrombolytic therapy and mechanical like thrombectomy which actually has changed the changed the life of the patients because they are the one which can cure our patients if the patient is treated on time and finally to uh, to actually identify the stroke one must understand the mnemonic or remember the mnemonic ob fast that i discussed and finally the treatment is not only in the acute phase, but one should treat to prevent another stroke that I discussed. And the other, the final thing is like the recovery after stroke. We should not be, we should not be betrayed by people telling like, you know, that your stroke will get cured after a year or so, or your weakness will get cured after a year or so. Because stroke recovery takes place within the first three to six months time. After that, yes, it does recover, but at significantly slower pace so treat stroke on time so with this i would like to uh, conclude my presentation here and i would like to thank uh, all the like all the all the members who are behind the scene in this presentation who have who has helped me to uh, like actually actually uh, manage and then manage uh, this presentation and then i would like to uh, i would like to thank all the all the viewers and all the viewers to, uh, who, who has viewed this and I would think that I would think that if this if, if the thing that I told now if it's instituted I think the motive of this presentation would be uh, would be uh, would, would be complete and we could we could change people uh, people suffering from stroke like life of people suffering from stroke uh, with this I would like to end up and thank you thank you so much.